Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss how the European model is going to be showing increased activity in the beginning of August, where we could see tropical development coming out of the main development region and potentially come through the Caribbean and head towards the United States. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibits.com for Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024. We have two tropical waves in purple that we're monitoring, one in the main development region, one moving out of the Atlantic into the eastern Pacific Basin. We have our intertropical convergence zone, which is has some convection with it by our pink arrows across the main development region, but nothing organizing. Then we have this surge of tropical moisture in the western portion of the Gulf of Mexico being drawn up by an upper level trough into Texas and Louisiana, bringing some flooding rains to the Gulf Coast regions of those states. And that moisture will then continue moving into the eastern half of the United States, bringing some very humid and muggy conditions and tropical downpours. But nothing organizing that we can see at the moment in the immediate future. So here's the spin and vorticity of the atmosphere showing where those tropical entities are located. And you can see the one in the Gulf of Mexico has some vorticity, but nothing organizing into a spherical circular shape uh, that would can be conducive of a low pressure system developing. And over the next seven days, we're not expecting any tropical development to occur. But that changes in weeks two and three, according to the Climate Prediction Center. And you can see that at the end of July into August, uh, the first week, we had that small 20% chance of development that we've been discussing for the past week or so. But now into week three, we also have into the main development region, a 20% chance of seeing development there as well in between the days of August 7th and the 13th. Reason being is we're gonna see on the left side of your screen here, a lot of green. That is upper level rising air over the continent of Africa, as you can see on the bottom left of your screen here. All that green's rising air. Rising air means thunderstorms, and thunderstorms are conducive to tropical waves when they come off the coast of Africa and then go across the Atlantic. So on the top left, top right of your screen, you can see right now we are in that yellow orange area that's sinking air dominated by the Saharan air layers we've discussed in a previous video. In between, you see this diagonal black box. This is a convectively coupled Kelvin wave, which is currently over the Western Pacific. And by the time we get to the beginning of August, it's going to be entering the Eastern Pacific, exiting there and entering the uh, Atlantic Basin. And that's going to make the environment much more conducive for tropical development in the Atlantic. And when we can see potentially tropical waves having the chance to develop into tropical storms at that point. And you can see that on the European model. Not so much support on the right, which is the GFS and the model, but the left, the European model, which is typically the better of the two models, is showing the signs of potential tropical development coming out of the main development region and heading up towards the Caribbean and potential southeast coast of the United States. This would be 10 days from now. I'm not saying this is tomorrow. This is not a week from now. This is potentially 10 days from now. So we still have to, some time to continue to monitor this. Plus, we want to see the GFS pick up on this as well. As you can see right now, we only have one lone storm potentially developing on the GFS. So if we start seeing this on both models, and then we can see potentially a tropical storm forming in about uh, a week to 10 days time coming out of the main development region into the uh, greater Antilles and northward into the mid-latitude Atlantic. So let's see that on the European model. So here's the model put into motion from today until for the next 10 days. And we can see how a storm uh, tries to develop 
from that cluster of thunderstorms along the Gulf Coast of Texas, but nothing really comes of it because it's over land. And then we're watching the main development region. And by the time we get to days 7, 8, 9, 10, we have this tropical storm moving through. So let's see why that happens. So here is today. Two purple uh, hexagons are our tropical waves. The red hexagon is our vorticity signature associated with our tropical moisture in the Gulf of Mexico. We have high wind shear across the Atlantic and a lot of dry air, except in the Gulf of Mexico, where we have a lot of tropical moisture. Which does try to consolidate into a vorticity signature, a low pressure system near the surface, as you can see on the map here by our red hexagon. But that's being induced more so by upper level dynamics. We have an upper level trough over Texas, which is creating that lift mechanism. So it's unlikely to be tropical in nature, more extra tropical mid latitude in style. The rest of the Atlantic still has a lot of dry air and high wind shear that we're monitoring. So then we get to a week from now and we see this tropical wave which comes off the coast of Africa around day four, day five. By the time we get to day seven, it's just outside the Lesser Antilles Islands in the Caribbean. And it's by our black hexagon here, still underneath our Bermuda Azores High moving westward, with also another tropical wave in purple on the bottom right of your screen coming off the coast of Africa. But it's the black one that is interesting. Now this is just one model run, remember. So we'll have Based on this model run, in a week's time, next Tuesday, this tropical wave outside the Caribbean islands with an upper level ridge overhead, which we know is conducive for tropical development. It decreases the wind shear, as you can see here. It also, with that decreased wind shear, protects it from that Saharan air layer. And with this tropical wave moving through with moisture, with a wind upper level ridge overhead, low wind shear environment, it's able to get through that Saharan air. And if it can continue to do that and move into an even more favorable environment, like around Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas, by the time we get to day 10 on this model run, we see a tropical storm developing by Friday, August 2nd, right in the beginning of the peak of hurricane season when we start seeing things ramp up climatologically. Boom, European model is showing it. A thousand four millibar tropical storm potentially moving through the Bahamas with another one trying to form behind it in purple in the main development region. Now, again, this is just one model run. I want to be able to see this continue, but the Climate Prediction Center has been saying for at least a week now that we're going to see development in this region. Now the European model is showing it. If we see the GFS show up, show up as well in the next couple of days, we'll definitely have a more bona fide hold on saying, hey, we got something coming in the next uh, seven to 10 days potentially. So we'll keep an eye on these two regions for tropical development, especially as we get into the month of August. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detail with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.